Honest and fearless, here's everything you need to know this rush hour of December 12, Thursday. I'm Riza Diaz. Opening today's rush with water regulator MWSS pulling the plug on Maynilad and Manila Water's extension contracts. It's a swift move following President Duterte's order to review the 1997 concession agreement over alleged or onerous provisions. Royce Nagit has a report. The announcement was sudden. The MWSS revokes the extension of its concession agreement with Manila Water and Maynilad. Nung December 5 board meeting, ni-revoke po yung... So, revoke na ang extension of 15 years. Ang board resolution po, extending the 15 years. Anong... During a House uh, hearing on good government and public Nera, accountability, MWSS uh, Deputy Dante. Administrator Leonor Cleofa said the decision was yes. reached last week, December 5. But it was only Wednesday morning that Manilad and Manila Water were informed about the retraction. We believe also that it's not um, proper to unilaterally revoke an agreement. Bula pa po noong magkaroon ng original extension noong 2009 ay uh, and base po doon sa let doon nga po sa approval ay uh, ginawa na po namin yung uh, spending plan that uh, presumes na mababawi po ang lahat ng investment natin Maynilad president and CEO Mon Fernandez expressed concern over the government's move Definitely it will go very high because the rationale of the extension at that time was to mitigate any spikes in tariffs or pressure ng tubig because nga ho, kailangan pong mag-invest pa ng mga water concessioners ng mas malaki. The extension was signed in 2009, way ahead of the original agreement's expiration in 2022. It augmented the contract by 15 years to 2037. President Rodrigo Duterte had ordered Solicitor General Jose Calida and Finance Secretary Carlos Dominguez to draft a new contract favorable to the public and the government. Should the current contract be cancelled by 2022, the MWSS said new operators may come in. Kung mawawala yung concessioners, kaya ba ng MWSS? Napakaliit ng aming empleyado, uh, mahigit isang daan lang po. At, uh... So hindi kaya? Sa ngayon po, kung existing resources, hindi po kaya. The two water firms are given three days to respond to the MWSS board decision. For News 5, Royce Snagit, we are One News. Water concessionaires fired back on claims against them, saying they were handed a finalized copy of the contract during the bidding itself. And then MWSS chief assessed consultants composed of foreign and local law firms and even the World Bank were brought into the drafting of the deal. Mendoz Baños has the details. Private consultants crafted the concession accord between the state and water concessionaires back in 1996. This was the admission of former MWSS Administrator Dr. Angel Lazaro III when quizzed in a Senate inquiry. To his recollection, the agreement was created after the Water Crisis Act was passed into law in 1995 under President Fidel V. Ramos. In fact, sa buong mundo, medyo bagong-bago yan. Kaya, hindi, kaya kumuha kami ng consultants. Tapos ha, oh, inapprove yan ng Board of Trustees. Pagkatapos ha, oh, i-review, nag-set ang Special Advisory Group uh, si President Ramos. The consultants, as per Lazaro, included the World Bank, which in turn also pulled their own foreign and local law firms. Foreign and local economists were also tapped. Before Ramos inked the deal, the concession agreement was first reviewed by a special advisory group composed of cabinet members. Lazaro said bidders were consulted before it was finalized, but he admitted the contract had no working draft when it was presented to the concessionaires. The water firms pointed out the government had a lone hand in crafting the accord, which was only given to them during bidding in 1997. Take it or leave it. Kung, sa, kung okay sa inyo itong kontrata na ito, di mag-bid kayo. Kung ayaw nyo, di wala. Apat po ang, 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 ang nag-bid. Ang una pong nanalo, ang original na may nila, that's the Lopez Group, at ang Ayala won the East Zone. To this, Senator Coco Pimentel asked, how can the onerous provisions in the contract proposed by the concessionaires be traced? Kung sinabi ninyo na 
there's a government agency hired consultants, presumably for millions of pesos or dollars. Tapos ang procedure na ginawa ng consultant na hired by the government is to just open everything, all of you interested, tell me, tell us your ideas. Pwede kaming mamili dyan, pwede hindi. Ganun ang basically, waniwala kayong uh, working draft sana o oh, para matrap natin saan ang ideas na nanggaling sa naging concessionaire. Hindi naman na ito 100% na gobyerno. Meron din hong contribusyon yung mga, yung mga bidders dito. Pero hindi yun na natin ma-identify ma yun kasi sa bandang huli yun, isang dokumento na lang. Ngayon, pagkatapos nun ito, take it or leave it na lang. As for the provision passing business tax to consumers, that too, it appears, was government drafted. Maybe at that time, the reason is to make it more um, appealing to investors to come to the table because it's such a big investment and a big risk. Kaya, tinapon nila yung incentive na, o oh, pati yung corporate income tax, uh, pwedeng ma-excuse. Maybe to attract investors. At that time, remember, uh, the country isn't in an economic situation as we are now. Now, the big question come. Uh, um, the big question is, why did we continue to give them the same incentives? In the next hearing, the Senate will invite the consultants who crafted the alleged onerous concession agreement. Reporting for News Five, Me and Los Baños. We are One News. Possible setbacks may be expected after governments move to cut the concessionaires' extension contracts. According to a report by Pangmasa, Maynila and Manila Water warned that charges could increase by as much as 100%. The concessionaires, which now have until 2022 to operate, say previous extensions were made to their agreement to provide a longer period for payment over new water treatment facilities they installed. With now a shorter time frame, consumers may be forced to pay more. Boxing legend slash Senator Manny Pacquiao just added another title to his belt as a political science graduate. Pacquiao finished a degree uh, uh, in majoring in local government administration at the University of Makati on Wednesday. Now, the fighting senator has said before that he believes those wanting to run as senator or as president of the country should have at least finished college. The Ifuga rice terraces are now in critical stage of deterioration. That's according to the United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization. The Philippine Star reports that over the last century, the Ifuga rice terraces have been self-sufficient in food, timber, and water because of its unique landscape organization. But all of that is now being threatened because of environmental de degradation, unregulated development, and neglect brought about by urbanization. Tourism in the Philippines has steadily increased in the past few years, but to give it a bigger boost, Secretary Berna Romulo Puyat says more major destinations should undergo rehabilitation just like Boracay. Justin Punsalang has the details. As tourist arrivals in the country continue to boom, the Tourism Department is optimistic that the uptrend will be maintained as more direct international flights are now connected to provincial airports. We're introducing flights so people can fly in not only via Metro Manila, but via Mactan Cebu, Clark, and of course, uh, when we open, and of course, Davao, and, uh, uh, well, Bicol when we open it next year. Part of the tourism boost, the rehabilitation of major destinations, Bohol, El Nido, Siargao, Coron, and Baguio. We will help them rehabilitate Burnham Park to what it used to be. Wala nang cutting of trees and no more new buildings kasi crowded na yung Baguio. But it's not just for far-flung areas. Puyat assures that they are also focusing on urban areas with the agency already coordinating the Manila local government. According to the DOT's year-end report, foreign tourist arrivals increased by 900,000 this year with South Koreans still the top visitor followed by the Chinese, Americans, Japanese, Taiwanese, and Australians. According to the Tourism Secretary, tourism has a multiplier effect. 13% of the total employment comes from tourism. In Manila? It, in the whole Philippines. In the, whole 
the country's tourism revenue also picked up by 25% to 1.5 billion pesos. For News 5, Justine Punsalang, we are One News. The Philippines was hailed as the overall champion for the 30th Southeast Asian Games, but FISGOC Chairman Alan Peter Cayetano promises that the reign of the Philippine athletes have only just begun. Marlene Alcaide with the story. The 30th Southeast Asian Games closed out with a bang on Wednesday evening at the new Clark City Athletic Stadium in Tarlac. Arnel Pineda kicked things off by singing the national anthem. Followed by the parade of 5,630 strong athletes who fought for honor and country. The Philippines was hailed the overall champion of the 30th Southeast Asian Games after clinching 387 medals, including 149 gold. Meanwhile, FISCOC Chairman Alan Peter Cayetano boasted the success of the Philippines in hosting this year's SEA Games. We Filipinos have shown the world that we can do it. Kaya natin. At hindi lang natin kaya, we will do it with world-class quality. Breaking many records, biggest SEA Games ever with 56 sports and 530 events. We are also the most viewed SEA Games in SEA Games history. Amazing athletes, amazing coaches, amazing how the Filipinos welcome our guests. But he also took the opportunity to respond to his critics and those who did not believe that our country could do a good job of organizing the biennial event. For those of you who said this could not be done, for those of you who said this stadium will not be built on time, for those of you who said, sayang ang pera, dapat hindi tayo nag-host. Sa lahat ng nagkalat ng fake news, <laughs> ang masasabi ko sa inyo, at ito ay tagaan nyo sa bato, peace be with you. Cayetano also announced that he is planning to focus on and further strengthen Philippine sports. We celebrate the vision of President Rodrigo Roa Duterte to give all Filipinos a safe and comfortable life. Sir President, through sports, mailalayo natin lahat ng kabataan sa droga. We close these games today, but let me tell all the coaches, trainers, parents, athletes, we have only just begun. We will build here in New Clark City a national high school for sports that will give full scholarships to our athletes. We will upgrade and create inclusive, well-funded grassroots sports programs and support DepEd and the Philippine Sports Commission. We will prepare and support Para Games 2020. We will prepare and we have added 100 million pesos on top of the PAGCOR funds for our Olympians that will fight in the Tokyo Olympics. We will host the 2020 Asia Swimming Championships dito po sa Clark. And for the finale, the crowd went wild as the Black Eyed Peas delivered a solid performance. The group even introduced their newest member and sang their hottest single. That's to the delight of foreign athletes who could not believe that they got to watch a Black Eyed Peas live. I enjoy the concert. Yeah, Philippines have uh, invite superstar. Yeah, I really like it. Some athletes also thank the Philippines for their hospitality during the games. Powered by Smart. And that's how the day is shaping up to be. Join us again next time for another round of Rush. I'm Riza Diaz. We are One News.